Good day. I am Peter Roney and I live in Blacksburg, Virginia. The title of this YouTube video is A Question. Report Writing for Students. I'll try in this video to give you a very quick and brief overview of how a student could approach writing a report. First point, if a student does not have data, the student should not write a report. Well, I made a rather goofy study using a YouTube uploads. I wanted to determine the relationship between the file size of an uploaded WMV file and the duration of the resulting YouTube video. So I performed the experiment and I got data. Here is a table that summarizes uh, the data that I obtained. I used PowerPoint to create uh, blank screens. So I created a uh, PowerPoint presentation with one and then one with three and ten, thirty, hundred, three hundred and a thousand blank screens. I then saved these PowerPoint files uh, and created WMV, Windows Media Video uh, files. And in uh, column B, you see the corresponding file size in of these uh, uh, converted WMV files. Now, for interest is column A, and these were uh, the file sizes of the original PowerPoint uh, files. Row 7 is most interesting because I had a PowerPoint uh, file that had one thousand blank images, blank screens. Well, I uploaded the WMV files to YouTube and by the way today is September 8th 2015 and they're still there. And uh, on the uploaded uh, files I observe the YouTube measurement of how many minutes uh, corresponded to each WMV file. I hope I did the conversion uh, or listed the, the minutes correctly. But anyway, uh, whether they're correct or not, that is uh, another question that can be pursued. Well, this is a figure that plots two columns, the WM file size and the PP, the PowerPoint file size. Here's another figure, and this is the interesting one for me. This plots the duration of a YouTube video versus the uploaded WMV file. Okay, we've got a table, two figures, what do we do next? Well, you put them at the back of your report. The back is called the appendix. And you've already seen a table and two figures, but uh, we are going to give you uh, them in a moment. So uh, what's in the appendix? To repeat, 
your tables and figures. Here is a table with data. You've seen it before. Here are two figures with data. You've seen them before. On the left is figure one. On the right is figure two. And you place the table and two figures in the appendix. I may sound repetitive here, but I'm trying to emphasize the point that the first thing you do is start at the back of your report. That's called the appendix. Now that just seems a bit uh, weird, perhaps, because most books on technical writing assume that you should start from the beginning with the introduction. And then you plow on through and then you uh, get to your discussion, your conclusions, and finally the end, which is the appendix. Well, I'm suggesting that you reverse directions. You start from the back and you move forward from the appendix to your conclusions, to your discussions, and finally to your introduction. Back to front. That's different. And I must say, I've tried it out and it works. So uh, we have a table and two figures in our appendix. Now what do we do? Well, we write conclusions. In this example, I only have two, but with most situations, you can write five or six quantitative conclusions. And don't write more than five or six you'll uh, bore the reader. Okay, from my two figures, here are two conclusions. And these are quantitative. I'm giving you a ratio of uh, two quantities. And uh, I obtained this uh, ratio by calculating the slope in each figure. And here are my quantitative conclusions. Okay, got two of them. Wonderful. Now what do I do? Well, I've got to discuss each conclusion in my discussion section. I don't have to be very long. Uh, a paragraph per conclusion is fine. But in a sense, rather than just having the reader look at two figures in a table, I now explain what the significance is of the table and two figures. So I put uh, them in words. And that's a very useful thing to do. So your conclusions are really important in a report. Okay, got two conclusions. And uh, uh, now we come to uh, what my students have found to be the most difficult part of a report, the discussion. And I believe that a discussion is much easier to uh, have when you start from the back and you analyze uh, your data, get figures and a table and then you draw conclusions and now your discussion really needs to focus on uh, each conclusion. I won't do it here, but that's the point. But here could be part of uh, the discussion of one of the conclusions. Well, I con the conclusion says that the slope in a figure uh, has a certain value. And uh, in the uh, discussion, I could mention what the slope is and what the value is. And also, I can uh, add why is this uh, conclusion important? And here's my answer. You can predict a duration uh, from uh, the um, M WMV value. So uh, 
you have a predictive capability, and that's rather important to your discussions as well. That's useful. Okay, you had two conclusions. You have uh, had two uh, discussions. You're finished with them. What do you do next? Well, you write an abstract. I'm not going to write the abstract for you here, but uh, what is an abstract? It's a summary of the contents of a book, article, or formal speech, or in my case, a uh, formal report. In your abstract, you use one or two sentences to explain your system and what you did. Then the next sentence are usually reworded conclusions. In your conclusion in this case, you don't put the nature of the ratio, well, you just uh, uh, put the quantitative value of the slopes. And make an abstract brief. It's the essence of your report. And uh, it should be so short that uh, a reader would be willing to take the time to read it. Well, you finish your abstract, now what? Well, you're almost finished and the next uh, two sections are easy. What are the most important sections of the report? Well, here are the uh, four of them. I've already mentioned them. Okay, now what do you do? Well, you write an introduction. <laughs> I sort of laugh because uh, that always is an interesting experience for uh, student groups in my lab course. Frequently, in the old way of writing a report, uh, the student or student group starts with uh, the introduction and they talk about why the study is necessary. They may give a reference to previous study and then they state their objectives. Well, what are the objectives? I don't know. They may be rather goofy objectives that have nothing to do with the uh, uh, analyzed data that the student or the student group has. So with my back to front approach to report writing, when you write the introduction, you are expected to provide the objectives. Well, where do you find them? You find them in your conclusions. So in your uh, introduction, you state, well, these are the objectives. And the beautiful part of it is that uh, after the uh, reader gets to the conclusions, the reader concludes, hey, these authors fulfilled their objectives. Sort of interesting, but uh, so you've tied in your introduction to your conclusions and they agree with each other. Well, I've given you a very simple, probably two simple examples for my approach to uh, technical report writing. Does it work for other types of technical communications? My answer is yes. If you have an oral presentation, you can uh, uh, create the whole presentation from back to front, and then you will decide how you actually want to uh, deliver the presentation. You can use it for poster presentation <clears throat> using PowerPoint. If you write an article for the internet, you can use this approach for the article. The one significant difference between these alternative types is that most of them do not have an appendix. Therefore, you need to provide the data in a different way. And I'm not going to tell you this way because this uh, video is getting too long. And that's all. 
I haven't given you all the details, but I haven't wanted to make an excessively uh, long duration video, but you get the idea. Good day.